Well, you know what they say, God hates flags. No, they, that's not what they say, but I needed some type of segue to get into talking about the banners that you see in Game of Thrones. That's right, those brightly patched colors of fabric that you see for only a few seconds at a time, that's what I wanted to talk about here today. George R. R. Martin has definitely spent a lot of time and effort thinking up what should be displayed for all the different houses in the TV show and the books. Full disclosure, this is a much larger and more involved topic than I actually initially thought it was going to be when I wanted to make this video. So, for the sake of brevity and sweet, sweet ad revenue, we're going to focus on just the Starks and the Lannisters. Heraldry is, essentially, the study of coats of arms. That's right, you can go to school for four years to have a passably interesting conversation once. Now can I just please have my grande Earl Grey tea latte? This also ties in with vexillology, which is the study of flags, which is another fascinating topic, and you can start to see why different colors are used for different reasons, why all African nations, by and large, use the same three colors, why France and America use red, white, and blue. If you're a Reddit person, then I'm gonna have a great subreddit for you to go to down in the description below, along with all the other links that I use for research for this video. So, the Stark flag in the books is described as a gray direwolf racing across a field of white, with the motto, Winter is Coming, written underneath it. Looks like this. The wolf is not just a random animal picked. Typically, they represent rewards and perseverance. The Stark's motto is not a boast, but rather a warning to their kin that tough times are always ahead. And the symbolism of the wolf may become even more important if one of the Starks finds themselves on the throne at the end of this entire story, which, after thousands upon thousands of pages, you just want one of them to have a happy ending. A white background to a flag normally represents peace, purity, or innocence. There's a reason why we use a plain white flag to surrender. The French know it well. So to tie this all together, the Starks are a peaceful family but dangerous when provoked. They're willing to wait out more ambitious houses in order to get what they want. Which brings us to the Lannisters. Their sigil is described as being a golden lion on a field of crimson. Looks like this. Their motto is hear me roar, which I imagine they would change if they even knew where the Katy Perry was. The Lannisters, I suppose, are the closest that we have to outright villains in the stories, which I get it, yes, you can make an argument for the Boltons, but let's not skip too far ahead. Lions are the king of beasts, and adore normal kingly paraphernalia. We can see where the Lannisters' aspirations lie. Normally the lion in the TV show is shown exactly how we saw it in that image before. In heraldry, that pose is called rampant, which means it is attacking. It is driving the action forward. They are not willing to just sit around and wait for things to happen. A red background of flags is normally associated with blood, revolution, or valor. All things that the Lannisters are known for. Not all revolutions end the way that their participants foresee, and I really am curious to know whether all this scheming is going to pay off for them. Honestly, this stuff fascinates me. Not only is it great to see an author just fully realize a world, but as an English major, I love delving into the subtext of stories. This can seem like really nitpicky stuff, and I can understand those who think that this ruins their enjoyment of books, but for me, I revel in it. Mostly because I have no friends and I've never felt the touch of a woman. A year ago, I made a video about what the kings represent in a deck of playing cards. We take so many things for granted, and I think there's all of these everyday use objects that have so many hidden meanings if we take the time to like delve into them. It just uncovers this whole untapped area of history and our own culture that I think that we should all embrace. My name is Kyle. I will see you all again next Thursday where I'll probably be talking about something else that fascinates me or I'll just sit here and wink at you for two minutes. I'm incorrigible.